In this video, we're going to learn about proportions and proportional relationships. So we're going to build so that we can get to the point where we can use proportional relationships to solve ratio and percent problems. And then eventually we'll be able to get to the point where we can apply proportional reasoning to solve multi-step ratio and percent problems. So let's start off by taking a look at what a proportion is. So here's a pretty easy definition of a proportion. A proportion is an equation, so it has an equal sign, stating that two ratios are equivalent. Another word for ratios right here is two fractions. Two fractions are equivalent. So two thirds is equal to four sixths. Those two fractions are equivalent, therefore this forms a proportion. When two quantities form a proportion, they are called proportional. So two thirds is proportional to four sixths. An important property, kind of an interesting property of proportions is called the cross products property. So in this proportion, they've even kind of color coded these things here. So here's our first fraction, A over B, it's equal to C over D. The products, meaning multiplication, diagonally are called cross products. So A times D, B times C. It's the numerator of one fraction times the denominator of the other fraction. Again, multiplication diagonally. The cross products property says that cross products of any proportion are equal. So here was our proportion originally that we saw on the first slide. Two thirds is equal to four sixths. So the cross products are two times six and three times four. Well, two times six is 12. Three times four is also 12. That property holds true for any proportion. If the cross products are not equal, then it is not a proportion. So we're gonna use this cross products property just to verify the things that are proportional. We're also gonna use it to eventually solve proportions here in a little bit. So let's decide if these are if these ratios form a proportion. So one half, five tenths, we're gonna test whether or not they're equal just by doing cross products. So we're just multiplying diagonally right here. So we're doing one times 10 and we're doing two times five and we're saying those should equal each other. If they do, it's proportion. One times 10 is 10, two times five is 10, so they equal the same thing. The cross products are equal. So this is a proportion. These two ratios would be proportional. Now let's do the second one. So we have, again, diagonal. So we're doing 4 sixths is equal to 18 24ths. We're going to multiply diagonally. So we're doing... 4 times 24, and we're going to decide if that's equal to 6 times 18. So 4 times 24 is 96. Drop down our equal sign. 6 times 18 is 108. In this one, the cross products are not equal. Put a slash to our equal sign here that means that this is not a proportion so cross products help us verify whether or not it is a proportion cross products also help us solve proportions so three easy steps here for solving proportions this is what it's going to look like when we're solving it solving it means we're finding a value a number for this missing one this x so first we need to find the cross products. We need to calculate the cross products. So I'm gonna do that down here. So we have 24 times 25, and then we have X times 40 or 40 times X. These are the cross products. And then once we find them, we're gonna use the cross products property that we've talked about to make an equation. So let's find them here, 24 times 25 is 600. 40 times x is just 40x. Remember, cross products property says these two cross products that we just found have to be equal. 
So all we have to do is slap an equal sign in between them, and now we have an equation. So now we have an equation, and we can solve an equation. That's our last step, is just solve it. So get the variable by itself. 40x means 40 times x, so the inverse of multiplying is dividing by 40. So we're dividing both sides by 40. That leaves x on this side. 600 divided by 40 is 15. So x equals 15 in this proportion. That would make these two fractions equivalent. You could plug it in and test it if you would like. You could do cross products and verify it. You could just simplify the fractions. They would simplify to the same fraction. So let's solve each of these proportions. Let's start off with this one again. We're going to do our cross products. We're going to do 9 times 10, and that should equal 6 times x. 9 times 10 is 90. 6 times x is just 6x. So there's our equation. So our cross products led us to an equation using the cross products property. Now we just have to solve that equation. So 6 times x, the inverse of that is to divide by 6. So we have to divide by 6 on both sides because that's what our rule says for, for solving equations. And then when we divide by 6 on both sides, the 6s cancel here and just leave x. 90 divided by 6 is 15. If you want to flip it around, you're more than welcome to. x would equal 15. Number 2, again, do our cross products diagonal, so 3 times 8 is equal to the other cross product, 4 times x. And then let's actually multiply. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times x is 4x. So here's our equation. We got it from the cross products again. To solve this equation, we would have to divide both sides by 4. These 4s will cancel and leave x. 24 divided by 4 is 6. So x equals 6 number two well, let's do one more so let's multiply and get our cross products this time let's put the one with the variable on the left side so eight times k on the left side four times two is our other cross product eight times k is eight k four times two is eight so here's our equation that we got again from cross products solving this equation we have to use the inverse operation of division by eight on both sides and that leaves k equals 8 divided by 8 is 1. And there's our solution to this proportion. In summary, we are getting closer to being able to solve multi-step ratio and percent problems by applying proportional re reasoning. We learned how to solve proportions. So that's one aspect of applying pro proportional reasoning. To solve proportions, remember you find the cross products. You use the cross products property, which tells us that those things are equal in order to write an equation. So find the cross products, put an equal sign in the middle of those two cross products. There's your equation, and then just solve that equation. That's how you solve proportions. Hope that that helps you as we continue to work on applying proportional reasoning, reasoning to solve percent problems. Have a great day.